Hi friends, I'm Jesse from ShrinkRC.com. This video is going to be about the differences between Lexan bodies and hard bodies for RC rock crawlers. The first thing that I wanted to talk about was center of gravity, also called COG, and there's some other words for it too. But Lexan bodies are pretty lightweight, and the body is the part that usually sits the highest on your rock crawler, so there is an advantage to having a lightweight body on your rock crawler. On the other hand, hard bodies can weigh quite a bit more, and they are going to raise the center of gravity of your rock crawler, makes it easier to tip over when side hilling, for example. So there is an advantage to having a Lexan body if your performance is your sole concern. Now, if you like to have a challenge, then you might want to lean towards having a hard body on your rock crawler. We talked about the weight difference between hard bodies and Lexan bodies, and another thing that adds to the weight of hard bodies that also adds to their realism is an interior. As you can see, this hard body has a complete interior in it. I even have a driver figure in there. And so, again, that interior is adding to the weight and it's raising your center of gravity, but it's giving you the opportunity to add a lot more detail to your build and you can put an action figure or a doll in there if you want to for more realism. Another thing still relating to the weight of the vehicle is hard bodies often have opening doors, opening hoods that you can put a detailed engine bay in. And another thing that's adding to the realism, but also adding to the weight, therefore adding to the challenge, and adding to your center of gravity. Let's talk about flex. Flex affects the vehicles in a couple of different ways. One of them is aesthetic, and one of them is performance. Now, if you're driving along in a vehicle with a Lexan body like this, and you scrape up against something that's pushing on the body, you might be able to flex the body a little bit and get around that obstacle without too much trouble. Whereas if you have a hard body, the hard body might catch on that, and the hard body is not going to flex, and it's gonna force you to change your driving line, or it's gonna scoot your vehicle, or prevent you from getting past that obstacle. Again, this is, this is uh, performance versus a challenge. Now the other thing about the flex though is the flex to me when I'm driving a, a rock crawler with a Lexan body which I haven't done in a long time but one of the things I don't like about driving the Lexan body with a rock crawler is it reminds me that I'm I'm playing with a toy and it ruins the illusion for me of the fun of having this miniaturized realistic looking truck. I don't like seeing this flex and you'll see it sometimes it'll it'll wobble or vibrate or it'll flex while you're going over a thing and to me that just makes it more of a toy and less of a of an interesting uh, part of the hobby for me. Now there's no wrong way to have fun. If you have fun with Lexan bodies I'm not mad at you. Go have Lexan bodies. Go have fun. There's there's no there's no wrong way to have fun. I, I can't stand it when people try to tell other people how to, how to rock crawl. It's, it's entirely up to you. Another thing we can talk about is the details on Lexan bodies. Now some Lexan bodies have hard injection molded grills and other pieces like that to add to the realism, but a lot of times they just have a sticker like this and they're, they're kind of simplified. The door handles, as you can see, are kind of simplified like this where it's a, an impression of a door handle, but it's not as realistic of a look. When you have a hard body like this, it's got a realistic door handle, it's got a realistic grill, realistic bumpers, and that illusion of that realism of a hard body is one of the draws for me. It's, it's what makes it fun for me. Let's also talk about wheel wells. When you get a Lexan body, Lexan bodies are usually designed for very big tires, like 4.75 or even larger size tires. And the wheel wells are already giving you plenty of room to run a really big tire without having to do any modifications. Hard bodies are usually designed for a smaller tire in the 3.9 to 4.19 range. And if you wanna run a larger tire than that, you're gonna to need to go through and cut the body to make room for that really large tire. And that's the same thing in real life. You know, people used to argue about tire size on RC cars, and they'd say, well, 4.8 inch 
uh, tire, that's not realistic because there's no such thing as a tire that big on a, on a real life full scale uh, crawler. Well, in these days, that's simply not true. I just looked it up to double check and you can get a 58 inch tire from Mickey Thompson. So I think the argument about what a realistic size tire for an RC truck is kind of dead because like I say, in the real world, you can get a 47 inch or a 58 inch tire on your real truck. Now, on that real truck, you're going to have to do extensive modifications like lifting it and cutting it, possibly even moving axles to make room for those giant tires. And that is also true of hard body rock crawlers. If you want to fit a really big tire, you're going to need to make modifications to it just like you would with the real one-to-one -one truck. And for me, that's another thing that adds to the realism, adds to the challenge, and adds to the fun. But if you want to easily fit big tires without having to do any work on your body, now well, that might make you want to lean towards a Lexan body. What else did I have written down here I wanted to talk about? Body posts. Oftentimes Lexan bodies have body posts like, like these ones that you can see here and body posts stick up through there. They did a good job. This is a, a ascent body where on the front they put a hinge system on it. So they eliminated the posts that you can often see up here. And of course, Traxxas has their now uh, clipless system. And some of the Traxxas Lexan bodies are some of the best uh, realistic looking bodies I've seen. And I, I commend them for that. Uh, and they don't have post holes at all, but they still have this annoying, cheap looking to me flex going on with the body. And that's just something I, I have a hard time getting over. Modifying bodies, Lexan bodies, well, you can modify a Lexan body. Of course, you can cut it all you want. But let's say you decided to change the length of your, of your bed. Well, this, this bed is kind of a, a, a bobbed, I'd call that a bobbed bed right out the gate. But if you wanted to change the length of this bed, you're mostly out of luck on a Lexan body. You could try riveting it or you could try gluing it with shoe goo, but it's never going to quite look right versus with a hard body. I don't know if you guys can see this off, it might be off camera, this Mojave four door over here, but if you want to change the length of your bed, you can cut it and then you can re-weld that body back together using a slurry or using a MEK uh, or even super glue. And you can glue that body back together, sand it and repaint it. And you can, you can by doing that, you can create a four door out of a two door or a two door out of a four door, make a bed longer, make a bed shorter. There's all sorts of things that you can do with with hard body modifications that they're not impossible to do with Lexan, but it does not work out the same. Lexan doesn't like being glued. So let's move from there to, uh, uh, that, that, that's a perfect segue into the next thing, which is painting. Uh, some people, especially new to hard bodies, don't know this, but when you, when you buy a uh, Lexan body, a clear Lexan body, and you paint it yourself, uh, as you know, you've got to go shopping for what they call RC paint. And, and the brands like Tamiya and other brands sell RC paint. And what that is, is that's a flexible paint. And you need to put flexible paint on the Lexan body because if you use normal paint, like a, a lacquer type paint on, on, a, on a Lexan body like this, when you flex that body and you bash it into things over time, that paint is gonna crack and flake off because it doesn't have the, the flex in it that you need. Now, on the other hand, and, and also, I, I don't know if I said this, but Lexan bodies, you paint them from the inside, and then you wind up with this nice sort of uh, shiny exterior on them, and, the, and they almost always come out looking good. That's one thing that when I used to do Lexan bodies, I really enjoyed about it, is you could, you could get away with a lot on the paint job because the clear Lexan always became your top coat, and it looks kind of like a clear coat on there. And it's, it's a little bit easier to paint Lexan bodies, in my opinion, because of that. You always wind up with that nice shiny surface, uh, surface no matter what you do on the inside. When it comes to hard bodies, you do not want to use so-called RC paint. On, on hard bodies, you want to use regular paint. And, and Tamiya has another type of paint that is meant for plastics, and that's the kind of paint that you want to use. And in fact, you can use Rust-Oleum paint or Valspar paint or any kind of a you know typical rattle can paint that you would use on a car. And I even have a couple of bodies that are painted with automotive grade paint by professional uh, car painters. These two are painted by my, my friend Slow Crawler, who's Tom, and he did a beautiful job on those. But there's a lot of options for paint with hard bodies, and there, 
If you're going to do multiple tones, then I'd say maybe it's easier on a hard body because like on this one, I painted it. I don't remember if I painted it blue first or white first. I think I painted the white first. Then I masked off the white area and then I painted the blue area. And you have to think about that more with the Lexan body. You've got to do it kind of in reverse order when you do the paint job. And, and with the hard body, it's more like painting a one-to-one a -one vehicle. But you don't use RC paints on hard bodies. And you don't paint them from the inside. You paint them from the outside. And then a lot of times you'll go back and put a, a clear coat over it if you want to get this kind of a real, real shiny look. And the last thing that I'll come back to is the realism of hard bodies versus Lexan bodies. I've seen Lexan bodies that were painted with uh, really incredible paint jobs. I've seen them patinaed to where it, it, you can't say that it doesn't look as good as a hard body sitting still. But at the end of the day, it's still going to do this. It's still going to wiggle and wobble and flex. And for me, that just kills the realism. It takes the fun out of it for me personally. And that's why I got so into hard bodies and why I started Shrink RC. So if you'd like to learn more about any of this, be sure to check out more of our videos. Go to shrinkrc.com and see some of the things that we offer. And you can always write to me at jesse at shrinkrc.com if you have any questions. Thank you.